Let's bring in Yan Yang. She is a professor of economics at Willamette University. Professor, first I'd like to get your assessment to the census numbers. We are seeing slow growth, but amid a declining birth rate and large aging population. Uh, so again, your assessment and what are some of the biggest concerns here? Good to talk to you, Elaine. Um, so yes, I think there are some concerns about the slowdown in population growth, but I think um, the, at the beginning of the segment, it did talk about China's population is still growing. Um, past 10 years has added about 72 million people um, to the Chinese population. So that is still better than um, population decline, which was um, errorously reported earlier by the Financial Times. Um, but yes, there are some concerns about the aging population. The working population has shrunk by 40 million in the past 10 years. And so the working population now was only about 63% of the population, down from 70% a decade ago. And then the elderly population now accounted for about 18%. Um, of the population. Um, so that means a lot of challenges ahead because, you know, the so-called population dividend is disappearing quickly. And that also means the government needs to put their policy acts together to counteract this population trend. But it's clear this is not just a unique challenge to China, but this is really the challenge to the global economy, the global world, that the entire world has been seeing, you know, um, um, declining population growth in many of the high-income countries. Talk to us more about the choices that are being made that are reflecting these numbers. As we saw on uh, in our story a moment ago, there seems to be a shift to focus more on careers, having children later in life, or you know, determining that they want to have a small family. Are these decisions being driven by personal economics? Yes, I think to a large degree, yes, it's a personal choice as development present, uh, presented much more opportunities and priorities for women uh, pursuing education, careers, and also childbearing, child raising costs have skyrocketed. So I think all these has to do with personal decisions. But on the other hand, I think government have also a very large role to play if the government is able to promote some policies to, for example, um, promote more family-friendly work environment and provide more welfare policies and child care facilities, etc., then I think those would be very helpful for um, families to uh, have more children. Well, you know, you bring up an interesting point about uh, policies because we saw that relaxing the one-child policy a few years ago didn't make a huge difference. It did in the beginning. Um, so how can China's economy continue to grow over the years? Right. So one policy that is on the discussion, of course, is to further ease that uh, birth control policy um, to allow for uh, families to have met as many children as they want. And then the other spectrum was um, also to lift that retirement age from the current 50 to 55 years for female and 60 years for male um, to a later age. And that would definitely be helpful, but it might not be very popular. Yet, nonetheless, I think government has been talking about this actively um, back in you know, March in the uh, Central Work Economic Conference. Um, other policies would also be very helpful in addition to what I just talked about, you know, providing more um, incentives for families to have children. Some countries um, have some success by providing you know, more generous parental leave policies and um, giving child a right to you know, nursery places like Germany. Um, but other than that, I think it's very important also to, you know, improve technology, especially automation, um, to boost productivity and also education. Um, one important trend in the population census is that um, the population that has college degree has jumped um, by 70 percent to reach 15 percent of the population. So we could continue to um, have those supply side policies and, for example, easing the labor market restrictions. Um, allow the labor market to be more efficient and also um, more um, flexible. So all of these could be helpful to, in some ways, compensate for the de declining working population. All right. Great take. Uh, Professor Yan Liang, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.